I'm Mark, welcome to Yates Mates. Now, if you've ever typed in beginner's drawing lesson, beginner's shading tips, I bet this is familiar. The advice is draw a circle, draw a cube, draw a cone, imagine the light, build up your tones in layers, use a nice soft pencil like a 4B or a 6B. Some of them even, like I am here, give you the great advice of thinking about background tone. They might give you the advice to try a shading stump or some tissue to soften textures, to imagine light falling on an actual surface that reflects and distorts. Okay, what if your cube is made of wood? Well, what do you do about a wood grain texture? Okay, look, I'm here to tell you, from the start, you should be thinking about the materials you use because they will lead you to draw in different ways. And please, can we make the outcome more interesting? Why not make the ball float? Let's get to it. So, yes, you're going to need your nice soft pencil. I'm using a 6B. Yes, I'm going to use a rubber. But look, some plain old cheap as chips grey sugar paper and a piece of chalk will totally change the way you think about this activity. The starting points are similar, okay? We sketch a circle, we sketch an ellipse directly under it. If you're not comfortable with ellipses, draw the cross just like I have. Make sure your edges are rounded, they don't end in a point. We're going to imagine this circle as a sphere. So some light curved lines just to give us a guide for where we're shading will be really helpful. Now our tones, we're going to build up in layers. We can sketch quite roughly at this stage. Take note of where I'm holding the pencil at least halfway up. Okay, you can control the pressure much easier this way. And your tones just build in layers. As you get confident with the spherical shape, you can rub out some of those kind of construction lines. Okay, as you need more pressure, adjust your grip. Again, build up in tones. The bottom of the sphere is gonna be where least light is falling. So we're gonna build up more layers in this area. You can already see it's starting to get spherical. So, the cast shadow underneath. Our ball is floating, so unlike most tutorials, our shadow is not gonna be making contact with the ball, it is just that ellipse underneath. Okay, so I've adjusted my grip, pressing just a little heavier, building up a darkest layer of tone and just neatening up that nice edge. Keep it nice and clean. Right, I'm ready to introduce the next two steps that are really going to make a difference to this drawing. The first is some smudging. Don't bother with a blending stump. For this, you want a tissue because we're dealing with a big area. So all I'm doing is very lightly polishing around. I'm hardly even touching the surface, just softening that texture with some tissue. Same on the car shadow underneath. Okay, another layer of tone on my darkest areas. So just on the underneath of the ball there. Creeping up around the sides. A little more depth in the car shadow. And we're almost ready introduce something that is going to completely change the atmosphere and the way you think about your drawing, the white chalk. So many of these beginners tutorials don't encourage you to actually draw light or the lightest parts, the highlights. With white chalk which mix, you know, mixes beautifully with a 4 or 6B pencil, sugar paper loves it, it's the perfect 
material. It's cheap, it's easy to get hold of, it's going to massively improve your drawing from the start if you draw in this way. Thinking about both shadows but also highlights and being able to draw the highlights will change the way you think about possibilities as you progress from here. Now you could leave the picture like that, it looks perfectly good, a bit of white chalk in the background, you can see what I've done, dropped a bit of white chalk onto the lightest part to create a highlight smudge with my finger. We want to really go for it with some textures though. So with my rubber, the sharpest corner I can find, I am rubbing into this to try and think about how some highlights might be reflected off of the metallic surface of this ball. Adding another layer in to where I've already added chalk to kind of make that more opaque, okay? And really good tip, near the curved edges of the ball, some very thin highlights and then some white chalk dropped in. Okay, grab your blending stick if you've got one. If you don't have one, I advise if you're serious about moving on with your pencil skills, you know, get one. They're cheap, they're so easy to use, and a little bit of practice, they open up lots of opportunities for texture, tone, so forth. Okay, already those few little marks have transformed the texture of this, but we can go further still. Okay, we've established some highlights. Now, thinking about the curves of the surface, work up some darker shadows or some darker reflections. So here I'm using the sharpest bit of my pencil right on the point and doing some far more controlled areas, shapes of tone, thinking about curving around the form. Okay, I'm not looking at an actual ball for this, I'm just kind of using experience. As long as you work with the curved form of the ball, this should work. Okay, so adjusting my pressure, fading those areas out in parts, keeping the contrast quite sharp against the white highlights in other parts, you'll quickly find that you add a lot more to the surface of this object and push your skills forward a lot quicker. Who to thought it just by simple use of white chalk sugar paper. Last few touches now, working in a little more depth to my shadows, not pressing so hard that it goes all kind of shiny. Just push your 6B or your 4B to its limit without really forcing it. few more really sharp highlights, crossing over work you've already done can look really effective as well. A few really subtle highlights on the edge of the sphere will add a bit more life in those darker areas and I think we're really close now. Final couple of touches, again working with that spherical form, a bit more shadow work you could go on and on. Darken up that car shadow a little. Gonna put a little more white chalk around the edge. It's really gonna bring the shadow and the object forward, off the page, and bingo. Look, I can't stress enough even if you're right at the start of your drawing journey, use combinations of materials right from the start. Otherwise what happens is you get so comfortable with pencils that it feels like going back to the beginning every time a new material is introduced. Start as you mean to go on. Open mind, push yourselves, you can do it. Take it easy, see you soon.